Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, professor of organic chemistry at Romano Scientific in New York and the creator of the Dot Destroyer books. I am here today with Professor Louis Blois. He's a mathematician and he's going to go over some types of questions that are brand new to the DAT and the ODE exam. All right, Professor, show us what you got. Okay, these are a statement sufficiency questions, and here is the preamble, the exact kind of preamble you'd find on the DAT uh, uh, test. Okay, A, statement one alone is sufficient to answer the question, but statement two alone is not. Choice B, statement two alone is sufficient to answer the question, but statement one alone is not. Choice C, both statements together are sufficient, but neither statement alone is sufficient. Choice D, each statement alone is sufficient. And finally, choice E, statements one and two together are not sufficient. So now let's take a look at this. And it, it looks very short and very simple. The question is very simple. Is X an integer? All right, let's look at these two statements. We are told that X to the third power is an integer. Statement two says 5X is an integer. So now let's go back and examine each one of these. X to the third power is an integer. Well, what is that? What set of numbers does that describe? It describes integers, right? An integer to the third power is an integer, but it also describes the cube root of numbers of integers that are irrational numbers, like the cube root of two, the cube root of three, the cube root of four. Those to the third power are integers. So from statement one, it's ambiguous as to whether x is an integer or one of those irrational cube roots of, a perf of an integer. All right, let's go to statement two and see if we can uh, glean more information about the, the, the subject. 5x is an integer. Okay, 5x is an integer. What set of numbers does that include? Well, x could be an integer itself, but it also includes all, no all rational numbers with 5 in the denominator, like 18 over 5, 19 over 5, 20 over 5, that are, uh, which is a, 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 an in integer. So 5x is an integer describes uh, rational numbers with 5 in the denominator as well as integers. Well, what does that tell us? If both of these are applied to the same set of values x, it tells us that we go back to statement 1, which describes integers and irrational numbers. It tells us that x cannot be an irrational number. It rules that possibility out. And in doing so, it leaves the area of intersection between these two uh, sets to be the set of integers. So combining the information gleaned from statement one and statement two, statement one saying that uh, x is either a, an integer or a, an irrational number, 5x says no, x has to be a rational number uh, and integers included. The intersection between those two sets is that x is an integer and that's the solution. I didn't write a thing on the board, but that's the explanation. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. So, Professor Blaise, the final answer to that would have been what? Oh, a, ch a, uh, a choice C. That Which would have been? Choice C. Both statements together are sufficient, but neither statement alone is sufficient. So, yeah, choice C. Yeah. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. Sometimes when a problem looks really small, um, it's a complicated yeah, problem, not yeah. so straightforward. Yes. Like in organic chemistry, if I ever said to synthesize this compound, um, it looks easy, right? Yeah. It's a very hard problem, and it's not straightforward. It's known as cyclopropene. Oh At any rate, um, hope you learned something from that. Sometimes when a question looks really small and easy, might not be. Yeah, right. All right, good luck to you. Bye-bye.